please the order. We all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. <coughs> This meeting is being live streamed by Chelsea Telemedia and posted to the CPS website for interested community members to access and watch. In-person public participation will be taking place tonight in accordance with social distancing and safety protocols established by the Chelmsford School Committee Public Participation Guidelines. Anyone interested in speaking during the public input portion of the meeting who has notified the superintendent's office of the desire to speak has been provided with these guidelines and assigned a time to attend the meeting to speak. If anyone watching this meeting live has questions or comments to share, they're encouraged to email one of us during the meeting We'll read their questions or comments during our second public input session at the end of the meeting. So welcome to this meeting of the Chelmsley School Committee. Uh, before we start, I just want to take a moment to apologize to those of you who came to or tuned into our meeting on Monday night. Uh, in an effort to discuss the topic on tonight's agenda in a timely fashion, we didn't properly communicate with Chelmsley Telemedia so we could have this meeting broadcast and taped. Instead of proceeding with the meeting Monday without giving the public the opportunity to view the meeting, we felt it was best to postpone it until tonight so it could be broadcast, broadcast and recorded. Uh, I also want to make note that uh, Superintendent Lang will not be here with us tonight. He has a previous uh, professional commitment, but we do have Assistant Superintendent Hirsch here uh, to help us in the meeting, and we also have Ms. Peggy Gump, our uh, Director of Nursing Services, to help also answer questions. So since there are no minutes or student representatives, we're going to move right into participation. Uh, we have three registered voters, uh, not registered voters, registered speakers tonight. Um, so I'll call them up one at a time. Probably both. Um, just want to remind people that are speaking tonight to uh, try to limit your comments to three to five minutes so everyone has an opportunity to speak. Remember that this comment period is for items listed on tonight's agenda. Also, please keep in mind it will not be responding directly to your comments during this part of the meeting, but we'll try to address them when we get to that item in the agenda. Um, so when I call you up, if you could just start with your name and address. Um, and so I will first call up Linda Moran. Thank you. Um, my name is Linda Moran. I live at 112 Westford Street in Chelmsford. Thank you. So I'm smiling here under my mask. And the first thing lost with a mask is the sight of a smile. My sophomore and the rest of her class have not clearly seen the face of half of their classmates because they have come from different middle schools. More importantly, there has been an intense and significant increase in mental health problems for school children related to mask wearing, including depression, anxiety, hopelessness, uncontrollable worry, and feeling overwhelmed. Add to that irritability, anger, negative moods, difficulty sleeping, difficulty concentrating, changes in appetite, and substance abuse. Children are at an extremely low risk for death, hospitalization, and other adverse effects from COVID-19. Meanwhile, children are 10 times more likely to die from suicide. The adverse effects of masks on linguistic, emotional, and social development are taking center stage. A study done at the University of South Carolina showed that masking is a psychological stressor for children and disrupts learning. The study went on to mention that covering the lower half of the face of both the teacher and the pupil reduced the ability to communicate. In particular, children lose the experience of mimicking expressions, which is an essential tool in nonverbal communication. In the educational setting, there's a lot of implicit feedback back and forth between teacher and pupil. These are the notable and noticeable short-term effects. We have no idea about the long-term effects. Do you think it's a risk we can take with the lives of the children that depend on us to make decisions to keep them safe? This is an excerpt from a poem written by a young girl in response to wearing a mask. My heart starts to ache. My head starts to spin. My breath gets faster. I know what will happen if I don't obey my master. Educators are required to enforce this mandate. They're here to educate our children and not to enforce an unsubstantiated and outdated mandate. Educator and student relationships can have inherent challenges to begin with. Having to monitor and enforce mask wearing can result in contentious atmosphere between the educators and the students. Bonding between teachers and students takes a hit. In the beginning, we didn't know what we didn't know. I wore a mask because I thought it would keep me safe. And even then, when I began to wonder how safe they were, I still wore a mask because it, I thought it might work and it would make others feel comfortable. Even though I began to notice headache, lack of clarity, as well as an elevated heart rate. I have a pulsometer and I measured my O2 saturation and it was 97% after wearing a mask. I'm always at 100%, um, maybe sometimes 99. When we know better, we do better. 
six systematic reviews of meta-analyses, which is the highest analysis you can do, of randomized controlled trials have shown that masks don't stop the spread of respiratory viruses. Lower quality evidence being used to justify masking include flawed experiments and observational studies that don't stand the test of time. Throughout 2020, mask mandates have not affected the infection rate or mortality curves. All masks, except for the tightest fitting ones worn properly, leak aerosols around the edges of the mask. Wearing a mask is harmful. Masks collect microbes so well that they function as personal bioaerosol samplers, increasing our risk of infection, reducing our oxygen levels, increasing our carbon dioxide levels, suppressing the immune system, causing an acidic environment in the body, causing us to inhale nanofibers from the mask, causing headache, and reducing performance. Exercising with a mask may be particularly harmful. Masks offer no tangible benefit or protection to a child. However, the daily enforcing wearing of a mask causes a plethora of health problems. Please consider, after 150 minutes of use, more bacteria were emitted through the disposable masks from the same subject unmasked. Mask use is not correlated with lower desk rates nor positive PCR, lower positive PCR. Dentists have seen a 50% rise in patients with cavities and gum disease. The percentage of oxygen inside a masked airspace generally measures 17.4% within seconds of putting on a mask. OSHA stipulates oxygen levels below 19.5 should be labeled as not safe for workers. Oxygen deprivation would adversely affect heart, lungs, and brain, and the human brain is very sensitive to oxygen deprivation. OSHA has decreed any room where carbon dioxide level reaches or exceeds 5,000 parts per million is toxic and dangerous. Carbon dioxide levels rising to beyond 7,000 parts per million have been measured shortly after masking a child. <clears throat> the risks associated with wearing masks clearly outweigh the benefits because there are no benefits. This is in violation of OSHA general laws that state it is your responsibility to ensure students attend classes in a safe environment. The specific codes are listed in the papers that I brought the other night. Ethically, the onus is on the proponents to show that the benefits of masking outweigh the costs. Keeping the mask mandate enforced in school, which Desi and Governor Baker no longer support, do not follow the science. The highest level of scientific evidence over the last 100 years clearly demonstrate that masks do not stop the spread of respiratory viruses in the community. Not only that, they put our health at risk. When we know better, we do better. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, uh, next up we have Ms. Katie Sullivan, uh, representative from the Chelmsford Federation of Teachers. Thank you. My statement is brief, and you'll be grateful it's me speaking and not Ben. <laughs> <laughs> we realize that this decision is up to you, the school committee, not the teachers, not the union, not the parents. We just hope you keep in mind the teachers who have immunocompromised loved ones at home that they go home to every day. Teachers may still need to ask their students to be masked while in their class to prevent a health crisis in their home. We want you to support them if they have to make this decision. And just please keep them in mind. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, a uh, final registered speaker, um, Melissa McDonald. Melissa McDonald, um, Six Colonial Terrace, Chelmsford. Um, I'm a resident in town, obviously. Parent of four Chelmsford Public School students. High school teacher at a surrounding uh, neighboring district. Um, and a family friend of mine, also a teacher, when she found that I was going into teaching, you know, 20 some years ago, said to me something I'll never forget. She said, we'll never be rich but we have the greatest job on earth. And I absolutely believe that. We're doing what we love, working with kids every day. And so despite our different opinions on masks, I think hopefully that all of us in this room really want what's best for children. We want our kids to succeed and to be successful and to not miss out on opportunities. I believe that so much of this has to do with fear and stress that this virus and our mitigation strategies have caused. Now, let me be clear, back in March of 2020, I was that person Cloroxing individual eggs from my egg carton. Um, my fears have since fluctuated, and as time and circumstances have played out, 
I'm a heck of a lot more comfortable with this. I'm in school every day at a high school in the trenches wearing my mask. My family has had COVID. In fact, we've had it twice in our house despite vaccination and boosters and things like that. And thank God everyone has been fine. I'm more fearful now for what the continued masking will further do to the psyche of our kids. Our kids' lives have been turned upside down, especially at school. I've heard many adults try to minimize what the mask mandates have done, throwing out the comment that, ah, it's just a mask. It's just a mask. And to that I say, it's not just a mask. It's a loss. It's a loss for our children. It's a feeling of grief. They've been deprived of something they value, and that is the face-to-face -face contact that they needed to have with their peers and with their teachers. This loss is a loss of opportunity for them, as my fellow resident has just stated, in terms of learning and linguistics, they're losing all of the social understanding and recognition of facial um, expressions and so forth. There's a loss of social understanding. There's a loss of basic cognitive development. I have a daughter myself in kindergarten who was recently picked up for an IEP, de de developmentally delayed. One of her accommodations is speech. How is my child supposed to learn her letters and her letter sounds when her teacher is masked and she herself is masked? She cannot see her teacher's mouth, how her mouth is forming different sounds. We're really shackling our students. This is a loss of innocence for our kids. They're worried, they're stressed, they're worried about what if they catch this? What if they pass this virus to their friends or to their loved ones? Now, many of our kids have already had this. Some of us have had it more than once. But again, they're scarred from this. Make no mistake, they carry a tremendous burden with them, and that burden is stress. Imagine yourself being a young child, carrying the burden of such heavy thoughts. Let that really sink in for a moment. Take a moment and remember how carefree and how happy a child's life should be. You know, I once in the last six months or so witnessed my son when he had forgotten a mask in public actually hold his breath for the extended amount of time before he could get on a mask. Think about that. I know you might say, well, that's kind of silly. Is it silly or is it harmful? because I absolutely believe that it's harmful. Our students are getting sick despite wearing these masks. Adults are getting sick despite wearing the masks. Our healthy kids have been continued to forced home because of exposure. All the while, they've been wearing the masks. And again, if these masks work, why don't they? I've heard, you know, and I've done my own research on this, mortality rates for kids under 18 from COVID, students are more likely to perish from heart disease, from cancer, from suicide, which is greatly on the rise, from drowning. There's several stages of grief that students go through, that people go through. They say that there are five stages of grief here. <clears throat> and I just wonder, within those stages, denial, anger, bargaining, depression, acceptance, this has been going on you know, for the better part of over two years. I wonder, do our younger kids, our middle school kids, and even our high school kids, do they have the coping skills available to tackle all of this stress? You know, what happens with grief, what we notice in younger elementary school kids, we notice nightmares. We notice regression, changes in sleep and eating patterns, perhaps even violence and acting out. In addition to those, our middle school students experience withdrawal from their peers, different academic issues at school. Suddenly, we start to have diagnosable mental health issues and concerns that are coming up, oftentimes regarding their own body and their own health. And again, this is in addition to what happens at the elementary school. When kids get even older at the high school level, we're talking about extreme sadness, 
extended depression, risk taking, alcohol and drug abuse, suicidal thoughts and tendencies and actions. Before you consider keeping these masks on our children, please reach out to your guidance counselors and ask them how many increased hospitalizations they've had this year. Ask them how many additional students are being treated for mental health disorders, like anxiety, like depression. Ask them how many students are not coming to school because of their fear that this virus and its mitigation strategies have created. Please help our children do what is right for our children and unmask them immediately, please. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to make note too, uh, when we had our meeting on Monday, we did have several other speakers here who weren't able to come tonight, uh, but we did let, let them um, make comments on Monday. So I'd just like to uh, make note of uh, Anne-Marie Hogan was here. Um, and she encouraged us to remove the mask mandate, uh, especially for students with special needs, uh, particularly those with sensory issues, uh, who masking is very difficult for. Um, and then we also had Ms. Lisa Chernin, um, who also would like us to um, remove the mask mandate. And her main question is, what type of studies have been done to show the effectiveness of masks at school? So I just want to make note of those two other people that came to speak and thank them for coming. Um, so uh, we are on to new business at this point. Um, we have just one item on the agenda tonight, which is deciding whether we want to rescind or modify our policy on face coverings to be in line with Desi's recent decision to end the mask mandate after February 28th, or if we want to keep it in place for the Chelsea Public Schools. Uh, what I'd like to do is I'd like to have Assistant Superintendent Hirsch uh, just go over a bit of an overview of Desi's decision, uh, go over some updates on um, local and in, in, in town, uh, excuse me, in school data on vaccination rates and, um, and, and COVID uh, rates within the town. Uh, Ms. Gump is here, if anybody has any questions on any of these numbers, then she can answer those. And after that, we can go around the table and we'll just go around and everybody can offer their opinions uh, and then we can decide what we want to do from there. Okay. So, okay. Assistant Superintendent Hirsch. Um, so, I just have a few slides. Trust me, it's not like an academic update. You're not going to be here for an hour. Um, just to kind of go out, talk about where we've been and where we are right now. And just to give you just a quick timeline, in um, August 18th, 2020 is when the face covering approval and policy went into place. This was right as we were going back to hybrid and remote learning in our school districts. Lots of different things happened between now and the 9th where Governor Baker and Commissioner Riley from Department of Elementary and Secondary Education announced that they were going to lift the mandate on masks as of the 28th of this month, 2022. And we are here now at this meeting to have this discussion and talk about you know, what, if, what's going to be happening with the current policy that's in place. Just to give you a quick summary of the current policy that until it's rescinded or amended um, by the school committee is in place for our schools. It just requires that obviously there's a face covering, covering face and nose um, in all of our schools, grounds, and our transportation. This obviously has the exemption and exclusions for anyone that falls under the CDC guidelines of having any type of medical behavior or other challenge to make it unsafe. And it also addresses the fact that um, there is no face covering requiring during our mass breaks, food and eating and physical education classes and any things that are happening outside. So that is your current policy right now in a summary. Moving forward, um, these are our current vaccination rates for our different schools. Obviously, Chelmsford High School is past that 80% threshold of vaccination rates. Please remember, too, that this is what has been reported by parents with an updated vaccine card. We have other vaccination rates for the town in general, but this is the breakdown based on our schools in our district and at each level. So the two middle schools are together, and then you have your elementary schools underneath that. So this is where this is a little, a little meaty slide here, so um, st you know, stick with me. There's a lot of words on here. But... We've had a chance to just do some consultation, obviously, with the health department. Board of Health has not met on this matter, um, but the health department here in Chelmsford has, and also with our school physician. So some of the key things that came up with that included um, the health department has always said that they've been in alignment with DPH and the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education, and also support the current guidelines that were just announced on February 9th. 
Um, they are seeing the positivity rate obviously decline in the town and that people have the more opportunity to get vaccines within the town, at, through our schools, through the town, and also with their health care providers. And um, they would recommend a delay in rescinding the mask mandate until 314. This is due to the February break where they've seen some upticks, obviously, in positivity rates after any type of school break. Uh, Mass DPH has just, uh, on the 15th, has updated their advisory for indoor mask use, and that includes all vaccinated people to wear face mask, mask if they have personal or family members with some type of weakened immune system and an increased re rate, uh, rate based on their age or an underlying medical condition. You have um, what we're seeing across the town in general is just at the schools, town, and statewide, that the positivity rates are down across the board. And that we, in talking with our school physician as well, is that some of the goal is to start planning for the next phases of COVID. COVID is still here. We're going to be living with it. So to keep an eye on those um, community transmission rates, what's available for vaccines for people, and to make sure that we have opportunities for the testing which then kind of summarizes at the end that the current data right now is supporting that we are seeing that trending down in positive cases, that people are able to get a vaccine that are interested in getting the vaccine, as well as boosters, and that the weekly pool testing is continuing, and obviously in our schools, and that we have the new at-home at, uh, rapid antigen tests available for us in our schools. So that's through those conversations with the health department, in Chelmsford and with the school physician. So if the mask mandate was lifted, we still have mitigating strategies in our schools that will stay in place. Um, please keep in mind that there is a face covering requirement for all school buses. This is the CDC order that went into place as of January 29th. And this is one that also includes transportation in general for planes, buses, ride shares, anything that falls under that. So school buses fall under a ride share, so they are, you will still be wearing a mask unless that is lifted by the CDC. That has nothing to do with um, the state or the town of Chelmsford. We would still have face coverings in our health offices. If students were ill and they came to see the nurse, they'd put a mask on while the nurse would tend to their needs. Um, we will obviously distance where feasible in our schools. We've been doing that all along. Uh, we have also um, already, um, planned for budgeting wise and people wise to continue to have additional cleaning in our schools, deep cleaning of the schools. So that will continue on. Our schools are very, very clean. The new at home at uh, antigen chests have been passed out. They go out every two weeks. This Friday being the second round of them going out, they get delivered by the state to central office. Then they are distributed to the schools and people that have signed up for them will receive them to take home and they'll have two weeks worth. We'll also continue with pool testing that happens at our schools and hosting any vaccine, including boost. I didn't put it up there, but we have the booster clinics as well. So anyone that would like to get an additional, um, ta uh, additional uh, vaccine. And we're gonna continue obviously with all of our messaging. Our communication strategies are still in place. We will have our dashboards updated weekly with um, COVID and pool testing, how many have taken it, how many positives, and that we will also let people know about all any, any opportunities within the schools to have vaccine and booster clinics and continue with both the district newsletter as well as the school individual letters just to get the message out and keep people informed of what's happening within our schools. Just to give you an idea of what's been happening around um, the Merrimack Valley, so we have five bordering towns to Chelmsford. Might be news to some people. Um, right now, Carlisle's voting tonight, so we do not know what their um, what their vote is going to be. But if the remaining four community decisions, you have Bill Ricker and Tingsboro lifting as of the 28th, which is that Monday the students return back to, from, to school from vacation. And Lowell and Westford are lifting their mask mandates a week after vacation, starting on the 7th of March. And then what's happening just in the general in Merrimack Valley, a little bit up the 495, a little bit down the Route 3. Um, Andover has a vote on March 3rd. Um, they have a meeting tonight as well as March 3rd. They have to have two readings of their policies to make changes. 
and then Bedford and the rest, Burlington, Drake at Tewksbury, are all lifting their mandate as of 228. So that's what's just happening in the general Merrimack Valley and surrounding Chelmsford in general. So here's where we're at at this point. So for the school committee, for consideration tonight, you have a few options. One is to keep your current policy, not make any changes or rescind the current policy. You have the option to amend your current policy and you have the option to up, adopt the MASC updated policy, which was in your packet. And what that is, is a combination of everything I talked about tonight. So you have the guidelines from CDC, DESE, DPH, that until further notice, this, this encompasses people wearing face covering if they, we strongly recommend it for anybody that's unvaccinated or has some type of compromise in our school buildings and on school grounds, as well as social distancing. It also includes um, anyone. So it's a, it's a, a flexible or an opt-in kind of mask up, uh, policy. If anybody wants to wear a mask, they can wear a mask. You do not have to be unvaccinated or have some type of an issue. You may wear one if you would like one. Um, this would um, not, um, not get rid of the DPH and the CDC requirements. If you are positive with COVID, you are to quarantine for five days. Upon your return, if you are symptom free, days six through 10, you should have a mask on. You must have a mask on. So that's if you're symptom free and return back, you will still be required to wear a mask. That's the guideline in general. It also um, includes that, that part of the health offices going to the nurses, they're considered going to like a physician as well. And that obviously we have that federal order that's still in place on our school buses until that is removed that students would be wearing a face mask on school. So those are your options for tonight and part of your discussions. And we're here to answer any questions and help you through the process. Hey. All right, before we um, go around the committee, uh, anybody have any questions for Peggy since she's here or for the super assistant superintendent um, on the numbers or anything else? Um, just, yeah, just one quick question. No, we just, it's just the committee. The committee, yeah. yes. Thank you though, yeah. But I've had several people ask if it's possible to continue with, um, you're going to get notification if people test at home and are, you know, are positive and, and so on. If you're um, able to continue notifying if there is a student in the class who has tested positive. So what we um, had um was decided upon the last meeting was that we were discontinuing the, the notifications and the parent letters. However, if there is a situation where, um, where we've made arrangements with the parents, if there was a special health care need that we should meet or someone who is immunocompromised and it was in their plan, we would, of course, make plans with that um, parent to communicate that information. But the general building letters um, that many parents would just felt that it was too much communication, too many letters, and that that's why we move forward with just, um, you know, doing our current is that we're really spending our time and our resources on the positive person and the symptomatic person to make sure that they're following all the guidelines, that they understand the guidelines of when to return, when to test, when to stay home. So we wouldn't be sending out building letters or um, even classroom letters. However, in certain situations where we've, you know, talked with families who have um, immune compromised children or any kind of special health care need, we would work with that family and let them know. Any other questions? I, I just have questions in general, but not for Peggy necessarily. Okay. Um, all right. So why don't we just go around the... Yeah, I was wondering if we could start with questions before... Yeah, who are you going to ask questions for? Right. Yeah. So, um, yeah, you know, one of the things that I think that, um, uh, you know, I, I wanted to say is, is I think that we've received many emails, um, you know, talked to members of the community and, and re uh, received uh, input for both um, keeping masks on and also removing masks. I mean, I want to thank everyone because I mean, I think that that kind of input is really important to us, um, you know, as we go forward and we, um, you know, try to figure out what is the best decision for the students and staff of our district. And uh, just, you know, so people understand, uh, you know, this information comes from a variety of sources. It comes from our own governing board, MASC, you know, our school attorney, um, DESE, um, you, um, our uh, Board of Health and things like that. So um, it's no easy task to wade through all of the information 
um, assimilate it, and then try to come up with is the best decision. Um, so my question is actually for, for you, Dr. Hirsch. I know you had a chance to speak with Andy Waugh, who's our attorney. Um, one of the um, emails that we've received, or actually there was a couple we received, um, they had been looking at some of the surrounding towns who were mandating pool testing. And speaking with Attorney Ward, that he felt that that was something, a, a direction that we would, might consider going in? Uh, when I talked to Attorney Ward, he, he would not recommend mandating anything in terms of testing. That would be still a voluntary. And in fact, I haven't found the document yet. I mean, we're pretty sure that the Department of Education told us that you cannot mandate any of the pool testing. That is an opt-in voluntary piece. I just have to find the literature around that, but he would not recommend that to the committee. Great. Thank you. <clears throat> you want to make you offer your opinion? Anybody else have any questions? Okay. I guess. You yeah. Oh, yeah. I was just waiting. Yeah. See if right, anybody wants to ask a question. Uh, okay. Yep. For um, the question is about if, um, let's say, a student um, is in any way harassed in any way, um, put down talked about because of this or our teacher or anyone in the system um, because they decided to either wear or not wear a mask, what would be uh, the guidance that uh, administration has to enforce what policies to make sure that, you know, that doesn't happen? None of our school policies or handbook policies are, are, are removed from this. If any student, for any reason, whatever it is, was being targeted, you know, any type of uh, discourse between different students, we would handle it the exact same way. There'd be conversations. If there was any um, truth to anything, there would obviously be discipline and consequences that go along with it. So all of our policies stay in place. Any further questions before? Donna, you want to just offer your, your thoughts and then we'll move to everybody else? <laughs> yeah. Uh you know, I think um, I have so many thoughts, um, and it has been an incredibly stressful process. It's been a really hard process. And I don't think people, um, no, I shouldn't say that. I think the vast majority of people appreciate how hard this has been for us since uh, 2020. And um, if, you, if people don't think that we don't take this seriously, um, if people don't think that uh, we don't prioritize the, set, the safety of our staff and students, then, well, you can join my support group at 2.30 in the morning for all those people, okay, who can't sleep because they have to make decisions that weigh really heavily upon them. Um, this is what my, um, my thought is. Um, <clears throat> I think that um, we are in a position in which we really have no choice. Um, but to um, go forward with the governor's um, and the Department of Education's mandate for moving mass on the 28th. Um, I think that um, it's unfortunate that they picked that date. Um, I would have liked to have seen it maybe extend a week or two out um, after vacation in case there, there was a little bit of an uptick. But unfortunately, they, they chose not to do that, and, and so here we are. I think that what I would like to see um, have happen going forward is, is that, you know, masks are optional for people. Um, as always, we've attended to uh, families and students with medically fragile um, students, and I think we, we need to continue to do that. And I, I mean, I think, and staff, okay, let's not forget the staff in this. You know, there are members, and I said this before at a meeting, who sit at this table with medically fragile people at home or who they themselves are in a compromised position. So if you don't think that we don't take this seriously, I am sorry, but you are wrong. And so we really have to be attentive to making sure that, you know, that we're communicating with these families, that we're supporting them in whatever way we can, and maybe not, coerc not, not using coercion in any way, but simply asking for the compassion and the empathy and the understanding of the people in the class to help us out you know, as we move forward out of COVID. And then the only other thing I would ask is, I don't think that this is gonna be a mask on, mask off kind of thing. I really don't. I think kids are gonna go through cycles. They're gonna to come to school, it's great to have a mask off. Then they may feel anxious and they want a mask. 
you know, we may go through this quite a bit. I think I'm going to go through it quite a bit, you know, to be perfectly honest mm -hmm. with you. And the idea of instructing without a mask on is incredibly appealing. But I'm also nervous. So I want to make sure that we have the necessarily materials available to our staff and students who, you know, as they're processing this change, um, if that's what we decide on, that, you know, that they, that they have the materials right there in the schools available to them. Hey, thank you, Donna. Mm -hmm. uh, Jeff, I just go, want to go around the circle. Jeff? No, go ahead. I know, Dennis, you're going to mention this, but we've gotten a lot of emails on both sides of the issue. And what's most impressed me is how respectful, how well thought out, and how sincere all the emails have been. That when, that's one of the great things about this town. It, I've been involved in schools for over 40 years, no age comment, <laughs> but I've been involved that long. You know, I moved here to, so my kids could go to school here. And unlike a lot of neighboring towns, we haven't had the issues when we've had these difficult situations. And I think that's something that really speaks to the town. And as Donna said, we've lost sleep. I mean, I can speak that I've lost sleep over this. This is, with this and the hybrid decision, we do take this seriously. Uh, we have kids either been in the schools, been through the schools, you know, I've worked in the schools, and I hope people realize that when we make these decisions, we know, I think it was Lyndon Johnson said, every time you make a decision, you make one person happy and five people unhappy, that we really have taken our time. We've read your emails, you know, it, it's so much easier to read a respectful email, the one that's well thought out, you know, as opposed to anything that would be nasty or vicious. And everyone has been wonderful. And as tough as this decision is, and it is difficult. I, I agree with Donna. I think we're at the point where I like this. Uh, school committee, the mass school committee recommendations and I just want to thank people for for their thoughtful, respectful input. And I want to thank the committee and Peggy for everything you've done, and the teachers, especially, and staff. It's I've been out eight years, and I can't imagine how difficult it has been for them. And they've been wonderful. We got through last year when we weren't 100% sure we could. And that's, I, I said it. And I always believe this, it's a societal thing. And as long as we look out for one another, I, I, this will work. Thank you. John? Yeah, so I got a few things. Um, so I just would like to echo those statements about the residents of the town. Um, I think the town of Chelmsford, I think we've all been through a lot together. And I don't think you have to go very far outside of Chelmsford to find some really divisive uh, conversations. And we've really stuck together, and I think Whatever decision comes out of today, I think we as a town will continue to stick together. Um, one thing that was important to me, um, I did see some comments about the reschedule of the meeting, and we do understand it was inconvenient for people, but we are public officials, and this wasn't um, just a vote on something like uh, you know a field trip, which are always my favorite votes, but it, it wasn't something simple like that. This is um, something that's potentially controversial, and we as public officials have an obligation to speak in front of people, and people have um, the opportunity to see this on TV and comment, and I'm sure I'll have 50 texts at the end of the meeting. Um, but we have an obligation to do that. So I know it was inconvenient, but we did give those people a chance to speak, and we did read out their comments, and um, we appreciate people's patience for that. Um, in terms of uh, the masking, um, I also agree. I, I wish they had given us that one little one week buffer, got us closer to the better weather when the windows were going to be open. But at the end of the day, um, if the school committee were going to continue a mandate, it has to be enforceable, right? And whether I agree with it or not, um, it doesn't really matter because the structural elements underneath that from DESE, from the state, um, even from the town, um, mandating something requires everybody to participate. So in this case, without that kind of support, um, it really makes almost this policy a little bit moot in the way it's currently written. Um, and I plan on supporting a February 28th um, withdrawal from the mass policy, whatever route we decide to go. And thank you for your time. Okay. Maria? Okay. Um, I echo the thoughts that um, apologies to anyone who was um, 
in any way harmed by not having the meeting when we had originally scheduled it. I know it was not intentional. It just happened the way that it did. And I think it's important to give the opportunity uh, to have every, everybody have a voice and for this to be um, public and televised. So I'm glad we're here tonight. Uh, COVID has been absolutely atrocious and there was probably no word to really truly describe what we've been through. Um, I remember when it first happened, my mom telling me that she'd been through the TB um, scare when she was young and she survived it and telling me that it was not going to be easy. Um, and I've personally had uh, very close people who died um, in my life from COVID. So I know how difficult it has been. And I also know how difficult it's been for many, many people, even those who have not had COVID in their household or in their close uh, family. I also know the harm that it's done. And we had a presentation at our last meeting um, on, on children. Um, and I think it's probably the reason why at the very beginning, I truly wanted us to have as much in-person schooling as we could. Um, so I understand its harms. I agree with what, what's been said that our hands are held in many ways here and that we're going to have to lift this mandate. Um, I would like it to be mask optional. I wish very much that we did have the seven or so days um, because I have been concerned on what happened after uh, past vacations, although this one may be different. We don't know. But that is what the state has stated. We have followed those guidelines in the past. Um, and so I think going forward, it would be, um, it, we're gonna have to do what we have to do and uh, not have much other choice in it. Um, and I do realize that we're in a different position now. We have vaccination. It's happened. Um, we've had other ways, uh, our systems in the school, we've made sure that as much as possible, the ventilation is there that we can bring to the picture. And going forward, there will be more. So certain things have happened. And so I do think that we are gonna have to do this. Um, and I wish again that we had that amount of time um, before we do lift it. Great, thank you. <clears throat> so I guess one of the disadvantages going last is that you know a lot of people have already said what I meant to say, but I think that drives home the point that we really do appreciate the, the fact that you know the people in Chelmsford are are you know their understanding. Um, you know, you know many, if not all, the emails uh, have started or ended with the statement thanking us for being willing to be here and to make these decisions. Uh, we really do appreciate that, and uh, you know we hope that we have uh, earned your, 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 your trust in making decisions such as this. Uh, as stated earlier, we've had many emails on both sides. Um, we know that no matter what we decide, there will be a part of the population that will be disappointed. Um, and that's what makes these decisions very difficult. Um, myself being a, a science teacher and a person involved with science for most of my life, you know, I, I, you know, I, I look at the data um, and I, I trust in those people that have dedicated their lives uh, studying um, these types of things. and. And um, you know, you look at the vaccination rates that we have in town and within our schools. You look at the how the, the numbers in terms of um, spread have gone down over the last couple of weeks. Um, we've we've talked to experts. We've and Peggy has you know talked to different people within the, the on the um, in the health director's office. Um, we've talked to our school physicians. Um, Desi has has made the determination that this is uh, an appropriate time. To, to make decision, DPH has made that this decision. Uh, even CDC, I think, in, in the upcoming weeks is going to be making some own some changes to their own masking policy. So I think the experts are, are coming to a similar conclusion that we all have. Um, you know, I think the biggest thing to me is if we decide to do it with the mask policy, people still have an option to wear a mask. Um, you know, if we continue the mask policy, there is no option. Um, so if if people feel that safer um, wearing masks, they feel more comfortable with their child wearing a mask to school. Um, they have that option and, and we will be supportive of that. And I think making this decision now with, you know, a week to go, you know, a week of vacation, we can get that message out to, to, to families that, you know, we will support you in whatever you do. And I think the administrators, the teachers in the schools will do the same thing. Um, I, I honestly think 
that we've all done our part for almost two years now. Um, we provided remote and hybrid options for learning. We closely monitor cases. We've provided numerous testing programs. We've offered va vaccine clinics to students at all levels. We've upgraded our ventilation systems in all our buildings. And we've conveyed the message to students to wash their hands and stay home if you're sick. Uh, I think that we've done just about everything we could have done to get us to this point. But there does come a time where we do need to move forward. And uh, I do think this is a time to move forward. I would like to see us adopt the new uh, DESE policy, which um, removes the, the, um, the requirement that um, people wear a mask for school. They still have the rec recommendations that if you're unvaccinated, you still wear a mask. Has a recommendation that if you uh, are immunocompromised, that you, you, you wear a mask. Um, has uh, uh, requirements for busing. It has requirements for the, the school nurse's office. So I think that's very encompassing. Um, if we were to move that policy, I think that would cover all the bases. So um, that's my input on it. I don't know if anybody else has anything they would like to add at this point. Um, I could like yeah, to add just absolutely. to mention, um, you know, throughout this pandemic, um, you know, the schools have, um, which happily so remained a very safe place for in-person learning for the students, for the staff. And um, I wouldn't want people to view this as, you know, the masks are off, the pandemic is over, we're not, you know, paying close attention, we'll continue to monitor, to pay close attention to all of, you know, the um, data that we need to be watching. And also that um, you, we've been successful through a, a combination of strategies. So it hasn't just been one single strategy, but this, the mitigation strategies. And we'll still continue and really support anyone who wishes to, you know, wear a mask, we'll provide a... Um, a very supportive and inclusive environment. We're gonna, you know, promote that, you know, the teachers and all the staff in the building, that we're gonna respect people's choices and people's needs. And that, um, you know, if you're unvaccinated, we would strongly encourage you to continue to wear a mask. Um, and even if you are vaccinated, there may be reasons why you would still feel that that is in your best interest. And we would, you know, really promote that um, environment in our school community. And we'll continue with the weekly pool testing, with the at-home testing. And I you know, would mention over the break, you know, this, um, people who opted in for the um, at-home test will get them tomorrow. And we would encourage testing over the break and encourage someone to test on Sunday, February 27th, prior to returning to school, just to be sure you know, that they remain negative. And of course, if you um, do have a positive test, you would reach out to the nurses reach out to your healthcare provider to let them know of your um, positive test. And we'll continue with, you know, as Linda mentioned in the um, PowerPoint, the um, frequent hand washing, we're promoting that, weekly pool testing, the deep cleaning. So all of those strategies will still be in place and we'll still support mask wearing and we'll be, um, you know, really working hard to continue the good work that we've been doing this year. It's very encouraging that our trends, you know, for the past seven weeks, you know, with that Omicron surge, we did hit that that big peak. But for the past seven weeks, it's steadily um, decreased. And I'm happy to report for um, the seventh week in a row, our numbers that uh, will be reported um, tonight at five o'clock, they were posted. Um, have significantly decreased from last week. And hopefully, even after the break, we'll continue to see this downward trend. And another good piece of news is we haven't heard that any of the um, subvariants are really posing a huge risk right now. We kind of knew Omicron was coming. We were prepared for it. We're not hearing that the, there's another variant that's waiting in the wings to really wreak havoc with our current situation of this, you know, decreased community transmission. And um, lastly, I'll you know continue to um, promote the vaccine clinics and booster clinics and um, make testing you know available and vaccine availability for anybody who would like to participate. Great. Other questions? I just had a question. Uh, in, I, even though they were never covered by our policy, uh, CHIPS has always gone, well, they have had a masking policy, um, so they're really not affected by this vote one way or the other. What would your suggestion be for, since those are not children that typically be vaccinated? I would strongly recommend that we continue with masking because that is a population. We were hoping by the end of February there was a lot of talk. Right to the um, public health experts that perhaps a vaccine would be available for that, you know, under five years old, but that's currently still, they're talking about now mid-April, that could maybe turn into, you know, May. So I would, you know, strongly encourage that um, mask wearing at that population. And they've done an excellent job. Those, right. 
little friends over there. It's amazing. You see the pictures of them. They really are. They've done a nice job over there, and the teachers and staff have done wonders. So I would highly, you know, recommend that they continue with their mask wearing. Can Megan McGurk meet with Dr. Lang and see what, you know, yeah, I'm sure that that, that will. The, that will. The, the, the MASC policy will encompass like all of our schools. So even though the original policy said K through 12, yeah. it's they're still part of our school district. Yeah. So they would just be assumed within that. Okay, but we still would encourage, you know. Yeah, we would that, definitely uh, encourage between the, the same parents. With, um, you know, our Lions Pride program yeah. and community ed. Okay. So are we just replacing EBCFA with this? It's the same, it, yes, yeah. um, it's the same lettering. It's yeah. just, this would be your new one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I guess the, the motion would be to adopt the new yeah. MASC policy on face coverings um, as it's presented. So it's in our packet if you uh, want to look at the, the actual policy and how it's written. It was summarized on this slide pretty well, but um, so yeah, it would be, if we we're going to go that direction, it would be to, if, if that's what the group wants to do, um, is to um, and you would need to make a vote right we'd need to move to uh, adopt the new MASC policy yeah I just say we go with the new policy yeah, All right. yeah. All right. you want to we'll, we'll yeah. make a motion I make a motion to adopt the updated MASC policy for mass guidance e Bravo Charlie Foxtrot Alpha that's the policy number I get it. Can you second that, please? Just end the misery. Second. Second, Thank you. okay. <laughs> Any questions? Any other comments before we vote? Jeff? Should, should we put in the date? I was yeah, say, yeah, well, to be clear, is yeah. this to be an effect of the... The, the 28th. 28th, 28th yep. Yeah. It's on the 28th. And yes, we'd fill it this all in the... In the template, there is a place for Chelmsford so, Public Schools. No, it's not clarify. the 28th. Is it the 28th or the next day? Next, next day. day. Can, so the, the dusty no, mandate goes to the 28th. You want me to read? No, no. no? Okay. I, I, let me clarify okay. that yep. for you because that did come up as a question. Okay. The, it is to be lifted for the 28th. Okay. So when we come back. Okay. So Great. as you walk through the door, no mask. Okay. okay. You, you, it's simple. Okay. Do you want me to redo that? Um, or we got it. Starting on, yeah. just could say, yeah, remake it and just say yeah. starting on the 28th. All right. I make a motion to adopt the updated MASC uh, policy EBCFA effective February 28th, 2022. Second. Second. All right. I'll take a vote. Donna? Aye. Jeff? Aye. Don? Aye. Maria? Aye. 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 Okay. Passes. Yes. All right. Any, uh, any other items? Donna? Yeah, so we actually have, I think, um, in this particular policy, uh, Maybe not this policy, but we have other policies dealing with COVID, and I think we should probably take a look at those as we go forward. Yeah, maybe we can, yeah. Maybe not next meeting, but the meeting. No, after, not the, the budget, budget meeting, meeting oh, but yeah. maybe the one after. Okay, so that. we'll yeah, yeah let's, we'll go through the, the policies and see which ones are related to COVID. Okay. okay. All right. Any other issues? Um. Um. Yeah. There's. Uh, when you get to public comment, uh, there is a an email to all of us. However, I will tell you, I do not have any written statement to be read. Correct. So I'm not sure what that is in regards uh, to. And you've never see, received any. Other than the one that we received from the health department. Well, yes, and that did actually you, went to Peggy, did right. not go yeah, to right. yeah. us. Okay. Yes, right. To all of you. Yeah. No, I mean, we didn't have a statement. That was just this more afternoon. Was a, we didn't more or less a question uh, from a parent. Right, and I think it was referenced in the slide, though. What's that? That's the, 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 the letter. Yeah, but yes. this, is, this is in regards to a specific... Um, uh, some type of a statement that was written by by one a physician and it to be read in and we did not receive anything from a physician. Correct. Okay. I uh, did you? No, no we we, we got a letter from the Department of Health. Heard, yeah, I've not heard. Yes, of which was in our our notes there. Right, that's what I was saying. Yeah, was so that was yeah, that was in the uh, in the presentation. Yeah. Oh. All right. Anything else? All right. I will take a motion to adjourn. I will make a motion to adjourn. I will second that motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Hey, thank you.